This is Twit. Nothing more scary. The treehouse of, of, treehouse of crypto locker, than uh, than viruses. Steve Gibson is a security expert. He does our Security Now podcast every Wednesday on the Twit Network at twit.tv. But he's also a uh, long-time well-known vir uh, antivirus and spyware researcher. In fact, coined the term spyware, wrote the first anti-spyware program. His program, Shields Up at GRC.com, is used by many to test their Internet connections to make sure it's not vulnerable to hacking. And I thought I'd bring him on because uh, we talked about this on Security Now on Wednesday, but I think everybody needs to know about it. It's called Crypto Locker, and it's a new virus. Hi, Steve. Hey, Leo. Great to be with you. Thanks for uh, spending some time on a, on a Sunday morning with us. So, Well, yeah, I thought it was really important because this is sort of something new. This new crypto locker, which an alarming number of people are falling victim to, it actually encrypts all the documents in their personal documents folder and, and even other files that it can find in thumb drives or on the network, you know, it's able to reach out essentially from your computer, but it it encrypts them in such a way that no expert, I mean, truly no one is able to decrypt it, not even the NSA. We've seen this category of software before. It's called ransomware where you'll get a virus on your system, malware on your system, and it puts up a sign. Usually it says, this is the FBI, give us money, uh -huh. and we'll let you access your computer. But in the past, that stuff is, you, an expert could get around it. This is not like that. This literally does strong encryption on your data, and there is no expert that can get around it. Correct. Um, they I ask for money, right? Yeah, they ask for about $300 US or uh, euros or the equivalent in bitcoins. They'll, they'll take your money in many different ways. And the idea is that they do have a key which can be used to decrypt your data. So basically, it's holding your files at ransom. And if you don't pay them, they really are gone. You have 72 hours to send them the money. After that, they delete the key. And it doesn't matter. It, 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 you know, you could beg and plead all you want. No one can encrypt it. Your data is gone. Correct. It shows uh, a countdown timer with how much yeah. time is left. And worse, apparently law enforcement uh, has misguidedly uh, found the servers that these keys sometimes finds the servers these keys are on and shuts them down, which means you may not even have 72 hours. If law enforcement gets to the server, the keys are gone, even if you pay the money. So, so yeah, the, 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 the way to think about this, I think, is backing up is now more important than ever. You're not backing up just in case your hard drive crashes or something bad happens to your computer. But if you got infected by this, there's really no guarantee you can get your data back. Do we know who's doing this? No. There's So far, they're, they've managed to hide themselves. The way they're doing accepting cash is through money packs and in fact some of the retailers that offer money packs have said they're having a hard time keeping them in stock now because so many people are buying them in order to try to get their files there's, back. there's a run on them they also yeah. accept bitcoin which is a much less common but but equally anonymous uh, form of payment right uh, it may not even be just one group we've seen this with ransomware before somebody sells a kit and then various groups will spread this around. It could be coming from a variety of different people. How, well, do, you, and the, how do you get the, this virus? I, I think the problem is that, that it's, going, it's making people a lot of money. And so they're going to be copycats. Right. My concern is this is we're talking now about the first one, but this is the first of, I'm afraid, many, right. because this is going to be the new model for what happens when you get your computer infected. And to answer your question, most of it seems to be so-called phishing mail, where something is email is sent to you that looks authentic. It looks like it's from your bank. It looks like it's from PayPal. It looks like something you, you may not expect but it's reasonable and they get you to click on a link or sometimes they'll say we just deducted some money from your paypal account right. and you go what Here, and you, right. you click on it before you think i've seen one example it 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 looks like it's from a bank and it says we've received a wire transfer uh, to you in your name attached mm. is the fax it has the extension .pdf but hidden it's really a .pdf .exe when you double click it it doesn't launch a PDF or Adobe Reader, it launches an executable. And by the time you figure that out, 
uh, you're you're dead. Does a, do, does an antivirus prevent this? You know, so far it is managing to get past all the AV. Although it is so new, this is only about three weeks from the first time we saw it. So there is some some delay before the antivirus vendors catch up. There's also a tool which is supposed to prevent its infection, which is available for free, where it deliberately blocks some of the specific behaviors that this thing, this crypto locker, does. The problem with that is if that got traction, the crypto locker authors would easily circumvent right. it and work their way around. So really just being extremely careful, clicking on links in email and and really have a backup because you unfortunately may need it. Now there is, there are backups and backups. There, If you have what's ah. called a hot backup, this yeah. may not be enough. Yeah, exactly. Because if, for example, if you're backing up to a, like you have a family or a residential network attached storage, if it can see the files, it can encrypt them. So that's so a so it can encrypt hot. your backup. Uh huh. <laughs> and furthermore, you could back up encrypted files. Once it's encrypted, if you don't catch it right away, those files could be backed up as well on top right. of your good copies. So you want a backup system that isn't local, can't be seen as a drive letter from your computer, your presumably affected computer, and you want a backup that has ver what's called versioning so that you can go to a previous unencrypted version. But if right. you do, then you do have recourse. Best thing, though, not to get this. There is no Mac version of this yet. It is right, Windows, Windows only. Right, yep. Um, and, and, and again, I'm just worried that, I mean, everything we've seen, mostly, I mean, historically, viruses have been an annoyance. This is new, and the it's not like this cryptography is rocket science. All of the code to do this is in the public domain. It's common knowledge how to produce this kind of system. And I don't think we've seen the last of it. I think this is the first of it. Well, it just reinforces uh, how important it is to uh, practice safe computing, uh, not to be very uh, suspicious of attachments, whether they come yeah. from somebody you know or not to uh, be very careful about clicking links in email. Never click a link directly in email and let a web page open. That's always dangerous. Or Instant Messenger. Or on Facebook. Or on Twitter. If you see links. You know, I, a lot of my Twitter friends have been hacked lately. And I get direct messages from, from them with links. And, uh, you know, that could easily fool you. Because yeah, it's, it's a direct message, private message from a friend. One of the best little sort of pithy bits of advice we have is... If you did not go seeking it, don't do it. Right. That is something that's offered to you. Unfortunately, in this day and age, we have to view that with suspicion. So, you know, manually go to the bank's website that sent you email or that you believe sent you email. You know, you initiate the action rather than letting someone push the action on you. Because you, Yeah, if you get an email from your bank, you could just type in the URL in your browser. That would be safe, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, don't count on your antivirus to protect you. While they are getting updated quickly, uh, they may not block that initial infection. And, of course, it's a cat and mouse game. As soon as the antivirus has come up with detection routines, the bad guys change how it works. And exactly. It. Steve Gibson's at GRC.com. He's a great resource to the community. If you haven't listened to his Security Now podcast, I'm a little biased. I co-host it with him. Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern at twit.tv or just download it from twit.tv slash SN. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Leo.